Once again, it's time for another Bob the Sign Man episode. Now on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man. Today, I'm going to be making some stop signs. I'm down to like two. So I have some blanks. And what I'm going to do, I digitally print them. I'll show you some little process I go through on those. Uh, I've got about a little over a dozen here. And how I store my signs when I, um, I put them in my overflow section. And I always want to keep a, a, a supply of stop signs. You can never run out of those. You, you don't want to order them because it's going to be... You know, oh, of two weeks, we'll get you one or three weeks. We make our own. I can make them for way cheaper than we can buy them. Usually, if you buy one, they're 75 to 100 bucks, depending on the size. I think we make them for probably, you know, pennies on maybe three quarters of that, 30 bucks or so. Anyways, so how I store mine is I store them back to back and face to face. So when they're being stored, the reason I don't like to have them all in order you know all the backs to one side is because sometimes there's a little burr behind here and I don't want it to scratch the surface. I've kind of got OCD signs uh, where I I can't stand to see a scratch on a new sign or anything. So I just store them um, you know face to face. Don't have a problem with it. Here's a I think I got 14 of them here. So I'll just go ahead and put them in my overflow. So let's jump into this exciting episode and I'll show you how I go about uh, getting them done. Okay, here we go. We're running the stop signs on the HP 365 printer. And what I need, I have 12 blanks. So I'm going to run 12 stop signs. And it's going to take me 72 minutes to run all those. And what I have is I have, they're 30 inch stop signs I'm making. So they're on a 30 inch roll of DG3. And what they require is a 74. 0.75 which is three quarter of an inch border from the edge of the sign in on both sides or all the way around I should say it's a stop signs are octagon shape so I have my little um, dollar store or dollar 25 store now rulers that I have here with the, with the uh, size of the um, borders that I use most frequently 3.75 which is 3 eighths 500 which is one half 65, which is um, 5 eighths, and then 750, 0.750 is a three quarter inch. So I have them there and I keep them pretty handy there and I, I tape off the little section so I know in between each stripe is how much it is. So what I do is I'm gonna grab my 750, come over here, and you can see the border that I'm running out here. I'm gonna have, uh, well, more than enough to trim there. And what I do is I don't have the, the guidelines on the side there because they're going to come in three quarters of an inch and then it wouldn't give me enough room to print it all. So what I did is I, I, I chopped them off on my flexi, just the, this side, but I'll still have the other one, two, three, I'll have six sides. And as you can see, they're running just slightly over three quarter, which will give me enough room to uh, be able to center them correctly and have enough to, to trim so the 365 printer what a little workhorse it's been for us it's going to continue to print and it's going to print for let's zoom in here a little bit for 70 minutes so an hour and 10 minutes it's going to take to print all those i'm using the take up reel which is going to um wind them up as I'm going and then uh, when I'm getting ready I'll be able to pull the roll off and um, sheet them easily. So um, another advantage of using the digital printers is a uh, real versatile tool. Now I can go do other things while I'm waiting for this to print. Okay another thing I'm doing since I got the 365 printer running is I'm making these um, decals that go on the back of my traffic signs. Whenever I install one it tells me the month, the date, uh, the, the year, a month in the year, and it also has a little section to punch out for the um, asset number, which is a pretty cool thing now with the printer. Like I said, it's in there working, and I'm in here doing some other jobs, so I can kind of keep you know my production level up here a little bit, so everybody's happy. I'm happy, the boss is happy, the taxpayers are happy, everybody's happy. So I'll pull these out and it just takes 
few moments. I used to make these stickers. I'll show you a close-up of what the sticker looks like and what I use them for. I used to make them by, you know, uh, cut them out by hand. And, um, you know, you make make a couple hundred at a time and it, it it's pretty time consuming. So now, got a nice little stack of them here. And then I'll just be waste. I'll, I'll show you what they are. Okay, these little stickers that I use, I use a hole punch and I can punch out the month that I installed the sign. The year, I don't get too far ahead, 24, 25, 26. And then I can punch out the numbers like uh, every sign has an asset number. Like if it's post number 4293, I just go ahead and punch 4293. And it goes on the back of the sign. It, uh, you know, it's got a, some information if a sign's damaged or anything and, you know, unlawful to possess this sign. Well, they'd probably just peel the sticker off, but the front of the signs also say the same thing. So, you know, just keep busy with your printer. Like I said, my printer's printing. I'm busy making the stickers, um, laying out my next signs that I got to print. And then once these are done, I have to put the ultraviolet cover on them. And then I have to, uh, you know, sheet them. And we'll get into that. And I've run into a problem. I'll show you what the problem is with this uh, sheeting. Uh, the 1160 film that I use with the 3M, it's supposed to be ultraviolet protection, which protects the ink from fading. And it also has graffiti guard, but it's so super thin. And it, it comes with a pre-mask. I ordered it without pre-mask. I think next time I'm going to order it with pre-mask. It is so thin and so hard to work with. I'll show you some of the problems with it. Okay, now that I have my stop signs run, I have about 12 of them here. I'm going to do two at a time. I spaced them out about an inch and a half apart. So it, when I put the sheeting on or the uh, overlay on, I've got something to work with instead of being on the edge. So I'm just going to slice off two of them. Do two at a time. Roll this back up. It's kind of neat. The uh, take-up reel rolls them all up for me. Now here's a problem I'm having with this... Uh, ultraviolet sheeting I'll show you okay here's a sheeting it's a roll of it 30 inch roll out enough to cover my 30 inch two stop signs and I'll cut it off well I like to have that little extra buffer room for the edge to cut and so I don't have my adhesive sticking to my table because this stuff sticks really really good too good matter of fact now I just basically I'm just gonna line it up now here's where the the hard part has come for me I'll just roll this out make sure I get it nice and level now what I'm struggling with is this stuff is so thin the the new stuff the, the other brand has a uh, uh, sheeting on the top of it like a pre-mask and I might have to go with that because this stuff is so thin it's just like I like that kung fu guy trying to walk on the rice paper so I get so far and that, and then it wants to uh, wrinkle back up and fold under itself like it just did there and that's why I have that little buffer room so I can uh, have a little extra to work with there scissors cut off the paper that it and I can just roll this out careful when you touch this uh, if you hold it you want to make sure that you don't get your fingerprints in there you'll leave your fingerprints forever on the sign or 12 years whichever lasts longer so there's part of it and now to flip over the other half I don't know if anybody's using this it's a 3m 1160 IC I think it is and they have another one called just the I which I think I'll get which is the the pre mask on it so once you get it started it's not too bad but it still wants to, to wrinkle up on you. Let me cut a piece of this off and show you. Okay, 
this stuff is super thin. So there's the paper that's on it. And it's just, it's so thin and it's so hard to work with. So this is the ultraviolet plus a graffiti guard. And I was thinking it was going to be a little bit stronger like the other stuff that we have. But nope, that's not the case. It's pretty weak and it's really hard to work with. So give yourself plenty of room on the ends and you should be okay. Okay, you can see the uh, marks that I left. And I left them a little bit bigger than the size. Uh, contour marks are called trim marks or whatever uh, you want to call them. So I'm just going to trim on the red line. Get it as close as I can. I'll trim all these up real quick. And uh, found out this kind of works a lot easier than trying to... Uh, So like I said, I think it works a lot easier for me to do it this way than to try to... Before what I was doing is I never had enough room on the printer to make these go all the way around. So I ended up having to print them on a 36-inch roll and then trim them down. And that was just a lot of waste. And like I said, I've been trying to really watch what I, I spend on and you know what I'm... My waste products. With these stop signs, you're always going to have a little bit of waste with these things, especially when you trim up these little corners you always have these little corner pieces left over so I'll trim up this one and I'll sheet it and I'll show you how the finished stop signs turn out all right so here's my finished stop sign it's all printed overlaid it's got uh, a little sticker down here it says property in Napa County and I, ha I should have get my seven my three-quarter inch border measure here so i have uh pretty close here not quite yeah you know, i still have a little bit all the way around that i can center it make sure i have a way to trim it that way i don't have any of the silver signs showing or the silver, you know the aluminum blank so when i light these up i already know that this border over here this side is just almost there this one is pretty close this side will be over a little bit but i'll be able to line up my sides really easy without any problems here. And just feel your way around the edge. This side here, I can see a little silver showing. And it's got, uh, you know, close to my three quarter here. So I should have, so now that I have it lined up, always make sure you have your holes lined up too. Worst case scenario, you get out in the field or you, you try to trim, I trim all mine, uh, put the holes in before I get out in the field. You don't want them off centered. And you're going to end up with holes all over the stop sign. So this one's ready to cover onto the blank. Just peel it back. I just tuck it under and roll it out. This roller tables really work good. The old fashioned way, some people you have to crank them by hand to get it through the rollers. Not anymore. You got the whole table that just rolls the blank right out. All right, now what I'll do is I'll just come down to the, end of the table. I have this little little bin down here that sits on a five-gallon bucket, and it catches all the scraps that come through. All right, there's the finished stop sign. We got my three-quarter inch border all the way around. And last thing I want to do is I go ahead and I trim these holes out right now. So when I get out in the field, where the bolts go to bolt it onto the post, that's one less step I have to do out in the field alongside the row because I don't like to spend a lot of time putting the signs together in the field. Um, so there we go. There's our finished stop sign. Got the holes in, ready to go. It's a sea service for about 10 to 12 years or until somebody decides to take it out steal it, run it over, whatever they want to do to it. Um, there's all kinds of things that go wrong with these signs out in the field, but whenever something goes wrong with one, you know what they do. That's right. Just like you should do. Just turn to the sign man. As always, thanks for watching.
Thanks for watching this exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man, filmed in the beautiful Napa Valley Bob the Sign Man directs, produces and edits all of his own videos. To learn more about where Bob the Sign Man gets his materials and sign supplies check out www.bobthesignman.com. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.